All right, everybody, welcome back to Golden Dice. If you guys have seen some of our gameplay videos, this is going to be our first uh, official podcast episode. Uh, like I said, we do have some TTS videos up on YouTube. We have a, uh, a live draft that I did, uh, and the game's coming after that. But this is going to be the first one. We're going to dive into legacies, what we're expecting, what we want to get. And if we have time at the end, we'll get into draft a little bit. But with me, I've got my good buddy, Tommy. What's up? How you doing, Jack? Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course, man. So Tommy and I are both uh, South Jersey, hail from the south of Jersey, uh, and we are just Destiny players there, and I've kind of been wanting to get on it, and Tommy's done uh, very well, been playing for a while and stuff like that, but we'll get into that, so I figured he'd be a good guest to have on. So Tommy, we just got to start off with a general question. How did you get into Star Wars? Oh man, I uh, I've I've been a Star Wars fan for as long as I can remember. I mean, some of my earliest memories are I, I remember watching uh, the original trilogy four, five, and six right at my grandmother's house when I was I don't know maybe seven years old, something around that age. And you know, just you know, the whole finding out that Vader was Luke's dad was just. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm telling my mom, I'm like, mom, did you know that? Like, how did you not tell me that going into this? Like, uh, devastated. It was amazing. I, I grabbed immediately, uh, fell in love with it. Yeah, I feel like I was generally the same way. Growing up, I had two older brothers too that also liked it. So uh, they kind of showed me the original ones. But I feel like my most vivid memories and early, or at least earliest memories are of the prequels. So because when I started to, become old enough to watch movies is when the prequels came out. Uh, so those were kind of my first introduction to Star Wars, but then I had all the figures. All my Lego sets pretty much were all Star Wars sets. <laughs> and, I still buy Lego Star Wars sets. Yeah, I would love to ha Like, I always see the giant ones, like the Kylo Starfighter or, like, a Walker or something like that, but then I look at the price and I was like, these are so I know. Cool. So I, I always know. get, like, the little like 20 30 dollar ones like i got a uh, the escape pod with r2 and c3po and jawas i built that nice i think back around my birthday and then my girlfriend got me uh obi-wan's jedi starfighter from episode uh three she got <laughs> me that so i built that which is pretty cool so but yeah definitely miss the days of waking up it was always like christmas morning and then spending the next few hours just building i still have a lot of them built on a shelf oh i i'm looking at some right now i just got um i'm uh I told a group of my friends, uh, some of my close buddies, actually the group that uh, I went to Gen Con with while we were at Gen Con that I was going to be a dad. And uh, when we got back, they all surprised me and pitched in and bought the uh, Kylo Ren silencer uh, uh, set. And they gave me that and they said, you know, your last toy bef for you before <laughs> every all the money goes to the baby's before toys. The baby so, breaks it and yes. All your money. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And then, you know, I have to sell my Destiny collection. Yeah. For, really? know, $50. Shane will be, your brother will be so heartbroken since he uses all your stuff. <laughs> um, well, I guess it's funny because, like, I feel like the need to let everybody get to know you, but they also probably have no idea who I am or what I've done since this is our first, really, episode. Uh, but I guess I'll give, like, background for me. Card games, I really don't have one. I played Pokemon a little bit when I was younger. Uh, I had a deck or two of Yu-Gi-Oh! that I played for a little bit. Uh, Magic, I bought, like, a starter box or something. I don't even know. My friend convinced me to buy it. We played a few games. Uh, but I was never, like, crazy into it, never did any tournaments or anything like that. Just a handful of games with some friends in my buddy's basement. Uh, but yeah, that's my extent of background aside from Destiny. I've been playing Destiny for uh, coming up to a year. I mean, I started a little bit before Spirit of the Bellion dropped, so I remember doing that pre-release and stuff. So probably, I don't know, 10 months, 9 months, whatever, playing Destiny. Uh, but you have a much more extensive background, and uh, no need to be humble with it, so... <laughs> well, well. To be fair, I am also quite a bit older than you. I think I'm like nine years older than you. So, um, yeah, I started. I, I started with the original Star Wars uh, CCG uh, when I was just a, a young buck. Uh, nothing serious. Just more of a casual. This is neat. I'm a nerd kind of thing. Uh, that you know spiraled into some Pokemon like yourself. Um, I played that a little more competitively, and uh, you know from there I bounced around from you know Magic. To Pokemon to Dragon Ball Z, take your pick of any one of those uh, games. Uh, landed on the Star Wars LCG more recently in the past few years. Uh, played that pretty competitively, went to Worlds a few times, made some top cuts, um, a lot of Gen Con trips. Actually, this past year was our ninth Gen Con trip, and uh, 
that's where my most recent uh, major tournament was. And I, I was fortunate enough to make top cut uh, for Gen Con as well. So I guess that's really my my uh, gaming background. And you did it with, well, you, so you ended up top eight, right? Uh, yeah. And yes, finished, I got. Uh, or you didn't finish. You brought a uh, unique deck. Probably the yeah, I mean, it was somewhat unique. It, it had uh, elite Kylo Ren. Uh, nines and a first order stormtrooper so i mean yeah i was abusing yeah. uh nines but it was more for the fact that uh both him and kylo specifically nines though is just an incredible value at that point cost of 10 13 at that time yeah um and they just you know i had so much durability it was a a pomaz rainbow nines meta and uh, i felt like you really needed to be able to survive and have some staying power to combat those decks um they just also happened that Kylo Ren special had a lot more value in those matchups, and it was more about uh, sticking upgrades on nines and then hitting him with the um, price of failure to move the redeploys over to Kylo and basically swing in all over again. It just had a lot of reach. It had the ability to really, uh, really reach in a different way than the than the Rainbow Nines deck. So it was a lot of fun. It was it was yeah. different. It was it was a lot of fun. It's definitely. Um, a unique deck. I, I got plenty of reps in with it, so I really knew how to use it at that point. I mean, did you play like 300 games with that? I yeah, it was about 300 games recorded uh, that I had played with that. We had we did some insane uh, matchup calculations and and just you know we we I recorded a lot of data on that deck. <laughs> I remember I was in your notebook. I had a whole yeah bunch. <laughs> yeah I had the little black book. <laughs> Well, first yep. you had that big whiteboard, but then you upgraded to the deck. So you bring yeah, it. all it's it all got transferred to the whiteboard. The whiteboard was uh, well, two whiteboards, but yeah, it all got transferred to that, so we could take it all in at once rather than flipping through pages. But yeah, man, I mean that's awesome. I mean, even to make the top sixteen, I mean you were that sixteenth, but then you knocked off the first seed and just be able to make that top eight and kind of have that mat and medal and whatnot to show off like you did at uh, our draft. <laughs> yeah, that was uh... a. <laughs> That was my goal. I, I wanted to I wanted to make top cut, and I had my eye on the Luke Matt. I love Luke as a character, and uh, I really wanted to to get that. So I, it was nice to accomplish a goal that I had set out to achieve. Yeah. So I mean, it, and I mean, we talked a little bit about how we got into Destiny, or at least our backgrounds a little bit. But it's it's actually funny how I got into Destiny. Uh, so I really got into all the FFG games at like one time, and so my bank account hurt a little bit. Uh, mm, like, yes, I'm sure it did. Right before Christmas, or no, it's Christmas. Uh, the, with uh, my girlfriend's family, we do like an Amazon wish list, and I had saw Imperial Assault, and somebody was telling me about that, so I was like, oh, I'll put that on there. So I got that, and then I saw X-wing. I heard of it, and then like right after Christmas, um, I saw the X-wing starter like on sale, half price, at one of the game stores at like an outlet by me. And so I picked up that. I was like, oh, this is awesome. And so I played a few games with your brother, actually. And he was like, oh, you should check out this game, Destiny. And so he wrapped me into it. And then I've spent a lot of money on that. And it's a shame I don't really don't play X-Wing or Imperial Assault as much because all my free time goes into Destiny. <laughs> it grabs you. It definitely grabs you. At its yeah. core, it is it is a fanta fantastic game. I, I love the depth of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so all... So both well, you've been playing since the beginning, right? Of Destiny. Yeah, we demoed it at the um, I can't even remember what I guess it was two Gen Cons ago. We 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 demoed it at that original Gen Con, and we all kind of just latched on. I mean, being Star Wars junkies and end gaming junkies, it was kind of just this is new, it's shiny, it's Star Wars, it's FFG. Let's let's do it. It was fun. Yeah. When we, we must have played, you know, several demo games while we were there. Yeah, I think that's the thing that kind of, like, I always enjoy card games, but the fact that this was Star Wars, and I already had many friends, you know, that you guys had already played, and obviously I met you more through playing it, but I had a few mm -hmm. friends buy in with me. Uh, some of them have tailed off a little bit, but I'm still going strong. But just being able to buy in with two or three friends and just be able to play all the time with them was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, absolutely. A group a group makes everything better. Yeah, my first game, or my first deck, I think, was one supplied by your brother. It was a Han. Hired gun, hired gun, and I remember I was playing it and having no idea what I was doing. I remember having second chance in my hand and knew him, or no, that Han was about to die. And for some reason, I thought I like played it like right after he died. Like, oh, well, second chance. But then I, right before I did that, I read it, it said upgrade, and I looked at like a gun I had on one of the hired guns, and I was like, oh, What was he doing, doing giving you that deck? That is that is interesting. Yeah, he I played, guess that's fine for a for a first deck, but man, that's a lot of paid sides. 
Yeah, he played uh, Vader Java, so I couldn't pay for anything. Because he either disrupted me or discarded me anyways. <laughs> oh, man, what a jerk. Yeah, I think I beat him once out of two games. So I quit on that, new. I was like, good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so over the course of your time playing, and I guess over the course of mine, I'll, I'll say that my favorite deck that I played with has either been Hanre or Qui-Gon Ray. Qui-Gon was like my first competitive deck that I brought to the first few regionals I went to. And I did okay with it. You know, I kind of played somewhere like middle middle of the pack, uh, but nothing too crazy. But then Hanre, I think it's kind of been my my favorite deck because the weekend you guys went to Gen Con, all the good players were away. There was a uh, store championship uh, in like Northern Jersey. So I went to that. But most of the best players in the area had gone to Gen Con, so I was able to grab second. I was like, sweet, everybody's gone. Time for me to pray on. Well, so, all, the, all the good players except for you went. So. Yeah, of course. If, if, and the guy that beat me came first. He beat me yeah. twice that day. Other than that, I never lost. Oh. <laughs> um, I would agree. My favorite decks, uh, I, I agree with Han Rey. I, I, I played Han Rey a lot in Awakenings. I just was drawn to that right away. I've always been uh, drawn to the value that is... Uh, the original starter Ray and the original starter Kylo, I always felt like 10 and 11 health at those point values with, with, you know, um, okay dice and okay abilities. I just felt like it was just a lot of bang for your buck. Um, I've always also been drawn to three character decks for some reason. My first deck was a, was a Ray elite Ray Akbar, uh, Padawan deck. And, um, but my favorite deck would have to be the, the Kylo 9's First Order Stormtrooper deck. I mean, any deck you can play almost 300 times without pulling all your hair out is, uh, to you got to be enjoying yourself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. And then, like, going into least favorite decks, I think actually the top of my list, excuse me, was FN. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Um, <laughs> both both playing as it and playing against it, it never, it never spoke to me. I mean, I see that, obviously, it was an amazing... Uh, fine-tuned machined at its best for sure um but you know sometimes playing against it and it's like oh you boundless you drew five weapons you have the resources to pay for it because you have two aftermath out you know like yep. it's uh it, it it did at times create negative play experiences it just had such burst potential but um it wasn't i, I mean you could beat it if you if you played smart if you yeah. if you played right but you there definitely was luck involved on both sides well yeah i mean even when i went to uh, the store championship that I came second at. You know, I had to beat I beat a Funk Car and a Rainbow Nines along the way, and I ended up losing to Poe Ray. Uh, the shield hate and that was too much. But that was like Poe Miles. Like I felt like both with Qui Gon and with Han, I could weather the storm with all the shields that I was generating. And theirs had to be blocked generally, especially Poe Miles. Uh, they didn't have handcrafted life or anything. Uh, yeah. But FN, it you know that was the day of the Viber Knife, and he would just roll that out and sit there. I'd get hit with you know, five or six damage from batons through shields. And like, with the decks that I play, there's just really nothing I could do about it. Uh, you know, the, yeah. the disrupt on it, uh, on Han, made it a lot easier. And I was able to take them down. But if I didn't hit that disrupt and stop them early, it was kind of hard to uh, come back from that. But, mm -hmm. well, enough about the old. You know, we got Legacies dropping, or at least the uh, holiday preview or whatever they're calling it. Uh, yeah, put it in quotes. Yeah. Well, I think they're waiting, so the FFG store champ or uh regional sorry uh the one that they're hosting passes and then like the next week i'll be like and here's a full release yeah i, I have a feeling it's it's gonna even if it's not labeled as a full release everything that i'm hearing indicates that it's going to feel like a full release yeah product seems to be there i heard a rumor on discord just the other day saying something about uh like the starters might not be there which would be very disappointing since i preferred mm -hmm. two of each but uh but yeah i mean generally we should be good we should be able to get a box and you know keep it for your own and then if you're wanting to start collecting through draft, you should be should be plenty of boxes to draft uh, with. Um, but yeah, so general expectations of legacies, you know, comparing it to other sets, this just feels more full than Empire of War. It feels more fair than Spirit of Rebellion, and it feels about on par with Awakenings in terms of gameplay, a little, like less mitigation and and whatnot. But I don't know. I'm excited about this set. I'm excited too. I, I think um, I think that the real interesting thing about this set for me is is that this is going to be the first set that they they created hopefully with draft in mind so a, a lot of times there are cards that like it's you know 180 cards i think in the set so you have to assume there's yeah. there's going to be cards that just aren't constructed playable but there are there are really neat cards that can find their way into 
to have a really valuable spot in draft um, that you just wouldn't see in constructed. And I think that that's going to be an interesting uh, experience to draft with this set to see if they really kept it in mind if they if they had that in their heads while they were creating it and 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 thought that through. I'm hoping they did. I'm 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 intrigued to play with it. Yeah, because drafting like. You know, especially depending on the rulings, you know, we've seen, I've seen back and forth whether or not the erratas count, whether or not the balance of the force counts. And it's like, if errata doesn't count and you play Spirit of the Bellion, I'd rather just skip. Because if Iron Knife hits the table, Imperial Inspection more so hits the table, I'm just going to not want to play against you. <laughs> I mean, Imperial Inspection specifically feels strong. I'm not sure if Viber Knife has the same impact yeah. uh, as Imperial Inspection. But uh, Imperial Inspection is also... The way we've seen that used is is uh, die sides are built around it. You know, you're playing characters with two dice that have two sides of disrupt on each of those dice. So you have a much higher percentage of rolling disrupt. That said, you know, bouncing an upgrade, you know, multiple turns throughout the course of a draft game is definitely going to set you back. It's definitely a powerful card, and I would draft it immediately. If, if Even if the errata applies, I think it's worth drafting. And Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a good two-cost upgrade. Regard it, well, for Vibranoff, yeah, it's a good two-cost upgrade. Imperial Inspection again would still be good without it. even just removing uh the crafted lightsaber or something like that would be super yeah good. No, oh that that that's an that's real annoying i didn't even think of that yep 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 Especially now you gotta wait a whole to round before you, you get it in there again yeah so that, that would be rough but uh but yeah and then awakening is just you know awakening is just pretty good for draft empire war again felt weak but i think legacy is definitely going to be uh one of the more fun ones to draft and and play with that and see what you can come up with, especially with the character costs going so low with battle droids around six mm -hmm. and whatnot. It just opens up different play styles, which point costs seem to be more accurate. They kind of adjusted it since Awakenings, which was their first set. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, so viewers, we have broken it down to like a few different like sections and whatnot, stuff that we're excited for. So, we're actually going to start off and we're going to do our top character from each color and then each faction. So I'm just gonna go through and say my six. Uh, and this isn't necessarily who I think is the best, and I think Tommy is the same way, where they're not necessarily the best characters, but they're ones that we're definitely interested to see how they play out and play with. Uh, so for my red hero, I got Finn. Blue hero is Obi-Wan. Yellow hero is Jedha Partisan. Blue villain is Maul. Red villain is Callus, And yellow villain is Boba. Um, yeah, I think I think those are all solid choices. I I, uh, I I know we overlapped on some of our choices and um, but yeah, I just I think they're all solid, top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, and I, it's um, I, mean, I think the only one that I feel like I would definitely interested, but you'll go into him a little bit too. I think you said blue villain. Uh, another one just be foul. I mean, he, he interests me too. But we'll we'll go through your six and then we can just kind of start breaking down our choices because I don't want to spoil anything of, of your list. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think um, I have, in my opinion, the the one character in the set that's not um, the most balanced. And a lot of people might disagree with me and, and think that that's Yoda. But I think Ayla Secura is absolutely above and beyond the curve with three damage sides. And that special is it's just insane. 10 health, 9, 12. I just think she's way above the curve for everybody else. So I have her as my blue hero. I have my red hero. I, I like Finn as well. Um, I'll put Rose as a backup just for an eight cost leadership. Uh, the yellow character uh, for hero again. I have I have Jetta Partisan. I don't I don't see. I'm not super intrigued by all the yellow hero stuff. Um, for blue villain, I have Palpatine. Red villain, I took Newt Gunray. I think he's gonna be a choke machine. And for yellow villain, I have Greedo. You know, for seven points, maybe eleven. He's just good damage sides, crazy ability, yeah. last ditch hail mary kind of thing. Yeah, I think first, so even just diving in uh, real quick, like I want to talk about just Jetta Partisan. Like, I just think it's a little bit ridiculous what they ended up doing with him and Saul. I feel like my man Saul got uh, gypped a little bit. So uh, I'll pull that up, but it's like Jetta Partisan has, so he's got two indirect, two indirect, a disrupt, a discard, uh, a resource, and a blank. And after you deal indirect damage to an opponent for the first time each round, you can you may discard the top card of the deck. So, I mean, that's a little bonus. You could put him in a middle deck, but he's eight points, and he's got two twos, while Saul is 16 points, has a two and a three, has more health, of course, but that's 16 points. That's double what the Jet is. And I think just overall, if I'm making a deck and I'm looking to do within that damage sweep, I think Jetta Partisan is just a better option because I really 
It's all special. Unless you build your entire deck around it, it's probably not going to pay off for you, especially doing against your opponent. Especially you as a Kylo player, Kylo 1, you know how sometimes you just hit those zeros. Now, Saul has a discard, but, you know, oftentimes you're just going to hit ones or zeros. I mean, I, I, I can't see a situation where you wouldn't, like, if you were thinking about putting Elite Saul in your deck, I can't see a situation where you wouldn't just want two Jetta Partisan. You're going to get 16 health. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just it's just, a, it's just an upgrade. I think it's a, a fantastic character. And that's, I think, the strength of uh, Legacies is the characters. I think the characters are the most intriguing part about Legacies. Now, that's kind of a loaded statement because I think the most intriguing part about the game is the characters and their abilities and the dice that go with them. I think the, that's what makes it unique. But... I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think he is far and away the most interesting uh, yellow character outside of Jar Jar Binks, which is just like throwing a hand grenade on the mat. Man, I'm gonna put him out there and just see, just see what happens with him. Um, we, we can dive a little bit into. I guess I mean you kind of covered the base. So I brought up uh, Ayla Sakura. So she's a nine twelve uh, for points. She's got ten health. She's got a one melee, two melee, two indirect, one resource. Special blank. Special says, turn one of your blue or red dice to any side. Turn an opponent's die to any side. Uh, so, I mean, I just, like, I agree with you. I think that is just crazy for 12 points. I mean, when you uh, balance of the force and give FN an extra point, when he really had the same sides, granted his two turned into a three light game with more damage on a character. Um, her still having that general same suit, same health, and even a point cost lower than what he was is a little bit crazy. Yeah, I, I think it's it's just good. It's I mean, I don't really know what to make of indirect damage, but I can tell you a two uh, black indirect damage on a die, I'll take that over a shield, a discard, a disrupt. In most situations, she's got offense and defensive capabilities on the special. I think she is the balance of the forces like most wanted right now. I think she's, she's screaming to be put on that sheet. Um, we'll see. Uh, that said, she is going to be the first character I probably build around. I think she is absolutely going to be uh, in the meta. Yeah, I think what happened is, I mean, it is the first set with indirect damage. So, uh, and of course, FFG should be doing playtesting, so they should have a general idea. But I think what they might have saw was that two indirect just wasn't as good, and probably isn't as good as a direct two damage like Phasma had. And Phasma's direct two turned into three. And so I feel like that's maybe why she's a few points lower. But, um, I mean, you haven't been able to, you don't have tabletop, so you you haven't been able to test it. But I've, I've tested a few decks, and two indirect is still a good side to have and like you said whether it's indirect or direct damage is better than having an extra shield or resource side or anything like that on a character in which you're trying to do damage which ayla is a character like that so and then her special just with the blue upgrades can be crazy you know turn in your force throw to the special and then turning their vader three to the three damage that you know turning vader's die to three damage and throwing it could be crazy plays or even just blanking out opponents i think she's super good so yep uh so out of my characters i just want to highlight one uh i'll talk a little bit more about him uh but finn he's uh 12 16 11 health he's got uh two range a plus two range three indirect one resource special blank uh the special is move one damage from a card to another card in play this ignores shields um so for anybody that hasn't really seen, I mean, at this point, probably everybody's looked at everything on Legacies, but there's some vehicles that put damages, uh, damage tokens on themselves. There's things like Backup Muscle uh, or even Battlefields that can move damage to them. So uh, he's kind of able to use that and not just willpower where it's just moving damage from a character to another character. Uh, so I think the biggest drawback with him is having a plus two and only having one range side. Uh, but I still think he's really good with the right partner. I've been playing him with Luke uh, for an exact 30, and Luke has the one range and two range, and I really haven't ever had the issue of leaving that plus two out there with nothing to modify it with. And then the three in direct is just crazy. I mean, again, I think it's undervalued a little bit. People kind of didn't think or really weren't sure how good indirect was, but just having played with it a few times, it is scary. Three damage is scary, whether it's indirect or direct. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just go back to your Palpatine games, you know? I'm sure everybody uh, listening is, has at least read Palpatine or has some experience against him, and, and indirect yeah. damage adds up. In the late game, indirect damage is direct damage, and uh, his ability is solid. I mean, you could even use it with a suppression field or the bubble uh, shield. 
you know, yeah. where you can um, you can find alternative ways to buffer damage. If you get one of those out early and your characters may be shielded up and not necessarily have damage on them, that's, I mean, still, it's not, it's not necessarily a bad side to have early if you yeah. can get one of those things out. But I, I, I think he's, I think he's solid. 11 health is good too. He's, he's a little costly, but he's got really yeah. solid damage sides. Yeah. I mean, any, I mean, it'd be nice for to have him 15, just so I could play him with Poe or Ray, you know, just for, yeah. uh, thematics. for thematics. Sure. Um, but really, I think you start to go any lower and having four, essentially four damage sides. Granted, one's a modifier, one's you know really just a special. Uh, but any lower than that, I think he just kind of creeps into that area of having too or too much to him for too little cost. So yeah, he's um, he's in there with Ayla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super excited about him. Uh, we'll get a little bit into what decks we want to run later and exactly, but he's definitely somebody who I don't think got enough credit being played again because of indirect damage but haven't played with him a few times i definitely think he's a little bit better than what we might have thought at first um before we move on to the next section are there any of the characters that you pointed out that you would like to say anything extra about or anything in depth you'd want to say about um i just think palpatine opens up a lot of a lot of neat um thought processes for a deck just just the fact that you can play these events at wonky prices it's really going to be difficult to play against palpatine i think i think it's going to be hard to anticipate what's coming and um, i think he brings a lot of value to cards that you don't see uh played regularly and i think that's going to be a, an interesting thing and um I, I know we might reference it later um when we go over some other non-dice cards as well mm -hmm. yeah and i think it just it's it's tough too because i don't think he's as broken as it's a trap but it's a trap also shaped how red hero was made you know, with the um, characters coming out, with the upgrades coming out, they couldn't make them too crazy because then when somebody it's a trap for 12 damage, uh, it's not the greatest of things to be on the receiving end of. But now I almost feel mm -hmm. like with Palpatine, um, with expensive cards, you know, you might make something that is a 5 cost like Rise Again, but now Palpatine easily able to get that off for 3. You know, I feel like they almost have to design and be careful with what, uh, blue cards yeah, absolutely. And it's it's his power action is not just blue. I mean, you've got to think about every event you make from here on out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess I was just saying blue because I feel like I've seen Anakin with him a lot. But I, I think Gamorrean Guard's a pretty solid choice with him. That give him uh, absolutely. I think I think that's a really solid choice. I think the one saving grace um, is that at this point, I think you have to play him at three dice to start. Which which helps because if you were starting with four dice and you know you could you'd have you'd increase your odds for damage sides in the pool much earlier. Now you're kind of relying on getting some upgrades down to yep. to change up the damage sides. And also you don't want a lot of modified damage in your deck because you don't have consistency in in finding a pair for that. Yeah, you're really so there there's really definitely th sides. yeah there's definitely um he definitely has drawbacks, but yeah. I I just think he's a fascinating character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, we'll kind of talk a little. Some, about some few cards um, that could be played with them and pretty good. But uh, so we'll move on to some uh, non character dice cards that we're a little bit excited for. So uh, I'll kick it off. I don't know how good it's going to be. I just want to play with it at least once. Uh, it is the uh, Resistance Bomber, which is a hero uh, red support. Uh, <clears throat> so it's a three cost. It has three indirect, three indirect, six indirect for two. Uh, to disrupt blank blank and after this die is resolved place one damage on the support discard the support if it has three or more damage from it so i mean we both mentioned finn you place the damage on this you can move it somewhere else to an opponent um you mentioned rose also uh her special can also move uh or remove a damage from a, a vehicle and i think the resistance bomber just looks awesome even in x-wing like i'm half tempted i really don't play that much anymore but i'm half tempted to just buy the resistance bomber and put it in my <laughs> Yeah, I definitely want the silencer for X-Wing. Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely want to see this. I think it'll be really interesting to see the opponent's faces when I resolve six. And granted, they get to distribute it, and I don't like to give my opponents options that much, but that's, I mean, I think that's tough to try and distribute six damage. Uh, granted, it costs two, but still, I think the cannon was a three cost for six, if I'm correct, or do they go up to five? It is a three. You just have that option of, of exhausting a character. Yeah, you have that option, yeah. Um, but with this, so, you know, I don't think it's really going to be top. I don't think vehicles will ever really be top. Uh, they did get some boosts, but I don't know. 
I really don't see it going too crazy, but it's just something that I would like to play at least once. I think it's an interesting card. I'm not sure what to make a direct damage yet as a as an archetype. Uh, I think it's fine um, in you know dribs and drabs. Yep. Uh, the one thing that this card says to me, outside of you know it is a support and we haven't seen the most success with supports to this point, but you definitely need some economy to pull this off. I mean, if you're gonna your goal is gonna be to you know resolve that six side. You know, to get the most value out of this, you've got to get three to play it. You've got to get two to resolve it each time. So there definitely has to be a good economy backbone. It's very possible with, um, you know, the chance cube or aftermath. There's plenty of ways to generate resources. There's even a lot of new ways to generate resources introduced in this um, this set. I know that there's the um, there's a red event that allows you to gain a resource as long as each of your opponent's um, characters has suffered a damage or has a damage on them. Something like that, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's Crackdown. Yeah, I just looked it up. Crackdown. You just gain a resource. So yep. that that's a perfect fit for an indirect damage deck because you would have to assume your opponent's going to be spreading that damage out. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's like you said, you always want to be hitting that six side. You, you're only going to get to resolve it three times unless you have Finner Rose or anything else like that. You're only going to get to resolve it three times and paying three to do six indirect, you know, if you're resolving the two three times, kind of doesn't feel great. I mean, you're still getting 12 damage for, you know, five resources, let's say, if you resolve the threes twice, and or it, co it comes in with a damage, is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm saying it won't feel good if you resolve the two each time. So if you pay the three yeah. to play and you resolve the two each time, like, you, you just want to hit that six, and it, you, even those two uh, indirects will almost be like blanks some of the time. Well, it's, it's three, it's three, three, six. Two, oh, three, three sides. Three. Ah, yeah. yeah, I'm getting it wrong. So I mean, even if you if you resolve the three every yeah, time, you yeah, still yeah. got nine damage out of it for three yeah. resources. That's that's not a bad deal. Yeah, I don't even know my own card, dude. Just a <laughs> that's why right. so I bring you on. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I'm literate. Yeah, you're literate. You can't. <laughs> um, so we'll but you beat me every time we play, so that's only, okay. Every time it, when it matters, that's right. Happens. You you wreck me when we practice at your house, but then. I don't know if I wreck you, but. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll bring up I brought up your card so this is uh, the non-character dice card uh, that you want to mm -hmm. talk about so I'll read off the symbols just so people have them it's got one range two range uh, shield special special blank it's Kylo Ren Starfighter it is uh, villain blue cost two and the special is choose a color then reveal an opponent's hand and deal indirect damage to them equal to the number of cards in their hand that match the chosen color so let's hear your thoughts on this card uh, again, it's it's just value. It's I, I I like to look for value. It's the first thing I look for in a card. I don't necessarily have a deck built around this. I know it's a support, and uh, you know they don't have the uh, uh, a distinct spot in villain blue specifically. But I'm looking at it. It's got essentially four damage sides. There's huge upside. If your first action is roll out the starfighter, your next action is resolve special. I mean. If you went first, they only had an opportunity to play one card unless they ambush chained. So, yep. I mean, you're, if it's a monocolor deck, you're looking at probably three or four damage. If it's a two-color deck, you might get one or two. It's got four damage sides. It only costs two. It just seems like a like a really strong support for two. Um, it's got a huge huge ceiling. I, I just I, I think it's it's just a value call for me. Yeah, definitely. Um... Super good. I mean, in addition, if this does end up and have a spot in a Kylo 2 deck, uh, I mean, just being able to destroy monocolor decks would be crazy. You know, because at that point, you get if you can get this special off against a monocolor deck, you're going to get generally 4 or 5 damage, and then you'll probably get 2 damage from Kylo. So you're looking at six, uh, 6 or 7 damage just from Kylo's Starfighter and from Kylo's ability. And then you still have his character dice and whoever his partner's character dice are to do damage. So definitely a good card. Yeah, I mean, you might even put your opponent in situations where if they can't play a card, their first action may be discard to reroll. Yeah. Discard. You know, if yeah. you if you roll that special out, it might be discard to reroll zero. I don't know. I mean, I, it's, that's not that far-fetched to imagine. Yeah, I agree. So super good. That's definitely something that I think is a good one. Good, one of the better legendaries to, to grab. So um, and this will be the last... Uh, upgrade card we'll look at, and I think most people have seen this too. It's uh, the heirloom lightsaber. It comes in the in the starter, so if you grab that, you'll definitely have this. But it's got a one melee, two melee, three melee uh, shield resource blank. This uh, upgrade has the 
redeploy keyword while it's on a blue character, and it costs three, and it's blue neutral. Uh, I think it's great. I think it just generally replaces lightsabers. Uh, the, you know, the original lightsabers. Yeah, uh, I agree. I play that. Um, you know, and you had mentioned this earlier when we were talking, unless it's like a heavy, heavy special chaining deck, mm -hmm. you might play the original one, but even then there's probably better specials you can chain with other than two on Yeah, the deck. only thing is you, if, if you were worried about your your number of redeploys, although you may be running something like uh, Funeral Pyre in that deck. Um, yep. But if you were worried that you didn't have enough redeploy in the deck, then I, I could see you running the, the standard lightsaber to chain that special in some s very specific situations. Yep. But yep. generally, it's better. I mean, you, you just pair all your modified sides. 50% chance you're pairing it. Yep, definitely. And then it just opens up, I mean... Guard, I love guard, but sometimes it just feels bad. But even that's just another three that you could have out there to guard away stuff. Yep. Um, but yeah, super good. I'm excited to play this. I think it will benefit a lot of uh, a lot of blue hero decks and blue villain decks. But blue villain generally has some pretty good stuff already to do damage with. Uh, yeah. The heroes, I mean, lightsabers in general, I feel like are a little bit of a struggle. I think Obi Wan's and Ray's lightsaber are definitely starting to get better. But like Luke's lightsaber, Kylo's lightsaber. Uh, the original lightsaber still can kind of be a little bit lacking, I find. But, uh, all right, so that covers some of the dice cards we wanted to point out. So at this point, we can move on to our non dice cards. So whether they're common or uncommon, uh, isn't a big deal. So I guess we can just kind of almost fire back and forth. So I'm gonna start sure. off. Uh, I'll do misled. It is a neutral blue. And it costs one. It's remove a character die, show the value of two or less. Uh, I really like this more so in a hero deck because I think it gives that little bit extra removal that they don't necessarily have at times. It's not spot a character, spot a blue character like most of them are. Uh, this is something that you can play regardless if your character's died, your blue character's died. Uh, it's rough because it is the same cost as Electroshock, but it's a character die. And there's a lot of good upgrades that have specials or even just damage that you're not going to be able to remove. Uh, since it's character die only. Like we talked about Obi-Wan's or even Kylo's Starfighter. So it definitely <laughs> lacks in that area, but I do think it is uh, a good one to have in blue hero deck. Yeah, I mean, a lot of blue hero uh, removal requires you to already have one of your dice in the pool. So if you're behind, this is this adds value to that slot along with um, the uh, the new Rivals kit um, zero-cost removal card. Uh, it's, what, uh, hidden, hidden what is it? Hidden Motive, yes. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic removal card as well. And the other one that we uh, we mentioned briefly was Unbreakable, which is remove a die um, that is equal to or less than the number of shields on your characters. I think that there are certain decks, maybe like an Obi-Wan build, that could uh, make yeah. use of that card, um, especially if you have a high percentage of winning the battlefield role, and then you, you're able to start with two shields. But, I mean, you're always going to be able to remove a special. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is very true. Yeah, so I... I... I did put up an Obi-Wan Maz TTS game, and I did have misled in there, but when we talked about Unbreakable, I think it kind of sold me on it a little bit, just trying to at least test that out in that deck, put two of it, and just see how... Yeah, it's, I mean, it's worth a shot. Definitely. Just see what happens. Yeah, my regional's not till March. I got time to test stuff. There you go. Come on over. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you uh, a week from today. We're currently record, uh, recording on the 4th. Who knows if it's going to get out, but... Yeah. Today, but that's the day we're recording. So, uh, we'll move on to yours. Uh, um, your first go ahead. The I am your father. Yeah, I, I think that this is more of a, a card to be played with Palpatine. Although I, looking at it, I, I do feel like it, it, it's a powerful card. It's, it's more powerful than I think. Uh, I realized at my first glance. I mean, if you, um, it's a, it's a two cost uh, blue event. Uh, it's villain, right? Yep. Villain. Yep. Where am I at? I'm looking at it right now. Sorry, I got it. All right, two-cost villain event. Um, it's an uncommon if that's relevant. Um, it says, Revolve, resolve an opponent's character die as if it were your own, unless that opponent discards all cards from their hand. So, I mean, if you drop that for one, and it says, you know, I hit you for even just two damage, that you're removing their die, you're dealing two damage, or they can discard all their cards from their hand, that seems like a really, really huge swing. That just seems like a powerful card. Um, yeah. Especially for one. I think I think you can justify it for two. I know earlier we were comparing it to other cards like Reversal. Um, and it just it seems like a good value at two. I mean, anytime my opponent's forced to discard their hand, it's basically like they, they almost lose a turn. You know, they get no rerolls. They get no removal. They get no, no fancy events, whatever it may be, that 
that uh, the deck may be built around. It may be synergistic. You might dump really important things. You, yep. I mean, I'd imagine they wouldn't dump the hand if it was that important, but it's, yeah. then you hit them for some damage. Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, I think this is the best, off the top of my head, this might be the best uh, resolve an opponent's die card, because reversal costs three and it's spotty yellow. Uh, there's double cross, which is two, and remove a yellow character dice, where this is just a straight pay two, resolve an opponent's die, and... Well, it's gotta be a character die, that's the die, that's yeah. the, the one stipulation. Yeah. But I mean, every, you gotta have characters to play Destiny. Yeah, and generally, I, I do feel like um, most damage will come from character dice. You know, Unless you're playing like a five die villain, I agree. Yes, yeah, yeah. so there's, I mean, but, yeah, generally, like, you know, if you can remove an Obi-Wan die, uh, you remove a Poe die, move a Ray die, you know, whatever it might be, uh, could all be pretty good value. Or if they just want to discard five cards, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but again, I think this loses value as the round goes on. Because at that point, they're probably playing upgrades and stuff like that, so. Agreed, agreed. Unless they're milled. Unless they're milled, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, we'll move on. So, my next one, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, it's a zero-cost blue hero. It's called Adapt. Probably has one of the worst artworks uh, in the game. <laughs> in this set. Uh, might be the rookie pilot of the set. But it says, uh, remove one shield from one of your characters to gain one resource. Uh, and it's a common. So, I think this is good. I'm excited to play. I think it'll be best in a Qui-Gon deck or a uh, Obi-Wan deck. And after that, it probably loses value a little bit. Um, and I, people say it's better than in Rage, but I don't. I personally don't see how. Because in Rage, yeah, you're doing a damage, but if you have a shield, you can still play in Rage. Whereas Adapt only works if you have shields. So Yeah, I, I, I think in Rage is just better. Yeah, it, it gives you flexibility that Adapt doesn't have. But either way, uh, just having a little bit of resource generation in Blue Hero I think is going to be super awesome. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, but yeah, so that's just one of the cards I want to look at. Well, so you mentioned your next one, uh, Unbreakable. Uh, Unbreakable, we kind of briefly went over. We could skip that one. All right. Da -da -da. Let's see. What do you got? You got Scorched Earth next. Scorched Earth is a is a another kind of wonky one. I'm trying to pick. Um, I'm trying to pick cards that aren't you. You know, people haven't talked to, uh, talked about already. You know. Yeah. To. And I don't want to beat a dead horse. You know, I don't want, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, but I don't want to, I want to pick something that's a little different. Um, so Scorched Earth is a, where am I at? Here it is. It is a two cost um, red villain uh, event. It's uncommon. Mm -hmm. uh, the stipulation is play only if you control the battlefield. So right away, you got to be playing a speedier style deck. You need to be playing a fast deck mm -hmm. in order to ensure that you're going to control the battlefield or at, at the very least like a two character build. Um, it says, deal indirect damage to an opponent equal to the number of dice in their pool. Mm -hmm. So this is great if you're playing a slower deck or a deck that runs a lot of supports. I just, again, huge upside here. You know, if they roll out just their characters and they have four in the pool, two, two costs for four damage, even if it's indirect, seems like a good value. Um, the other thing that, that really, um, for me, just stands out about this card in particular is, is that a lot of players, myself included, um, it, you're going to roll out most of your characters and supports before you start pitching to reroll to get the maximum value for that card from your hand. I don't want to discard a card to reroll two dice. I'd rather discard one card to reroll several dice. Yes. So yep. it's, people are going to be playing into Scorched Earth. I don't think anybody plans on playing this card right out of the gate, but I, I think that you could burn somebody, uh, not an unintentional pun, but I, I do think that you could burn somebody with this card. So if you are in the South Jersey, Philadelphia area, uh, local Destiny meta, make sure you start solving <laughs> your dice if you're playing Tommy. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right. Probably more specifically my brother Shane. He, this this card screams Shane to me. Yeah, and, and damage out of hand is just great. And generally I yeah. try to stick to the rule of if I'm paying one resource to do damage, it should result in two to three damage. Uh, Agreed. And this, I think, follows that, especially if it is uh, a two-character, four-dice deck. So if they get that out there, you're still getting four. Uh, again, indirect, but still. I, four damage is good. Um, you know, of course, that curve changes with stuff like we talked about with resolving dice and whatnot. So, but either way, yeah, definitely an interesting card. I think it could work, especially, yeah, against decks that just vomit out dice. Imagine playing this against Five Die Villain or even a Seven Sister deck. You know, you'll get pretty good value out of that. 
Uh, let's see, what do we got next? We'll do one of mine. Uh, these two have more been talked about already. So we'll start off with Locked and Loaded. Uh, it's a neutral red. Uh, spend one. Uh, spot a red character to turn up to two of your dice to uh, shide, sides showing indirect damage. Um, I just think in the right deck it's pretty good. In, in a battle droid deck it's good. Um, and in the fin deck that I've talked about a little bit, uh, turning both of his sides to double three indirects is super good. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's better earlier in the game where you're not trying to focus down a specific character that's been yep. particularly banged up. But uh, I agree. I think that it's it's a good card. I think anytime you can spend one to change two dice, it's it's a decent card. I think lightsaber training is an underutilized card yep. as well from EAW. Um, so I like it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, generally I try to stay away from spend one to turn one die, but two dice makes it a little bit different because they could mitigate one and you still have that, that second one that you're able to resolve. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, even late game though, like even if, if it is late game and they have one character left, those thin turns into six direct damage, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, but that said, no one's playing It's a Trap. With that errata, it's basically I think it's because this card. Um, you have to spot an opponent's die. So if my opponent yeah. resolves before yeah. me, rolls out before me, you know, plays around it, mm -hmm. which generally they're probably not, because again, who plays it's a trap anymore. Uh, yeah. Locked and loaded can let me just focus my die as long as I have a red character. Uh, That's true. And now there's there's three different damage types, four if you count special as a potential damage type. So it, you, yeah. a lot of times you're not going to be playing a deck that's built around the same uh, damaging sides or, or types as you. Definitely. Uh, and then I'll just do uh, my another one real quick, which is kind of red neutral, so I'll just throw it in there, which is crash landing. So it's a remove a die showing damage, then deal indirect damage to yourself equal to the value showing on that die. Uh, I think this is just something red decks in general needed, both hero and villain. Um, even in a two deck, it's decent. Uh, the more characters you have, the better it gets. You know, the most value you're going to get out of it is probably a battle droid deck where you can spread out three damage across five characters. Uh, I had this in a fin loop deck. It seems okay, but I'll probably end up dropping it for something else. Probably could get more value out of other cards in the set. But I like it. I think it's good. Yeah, the biggest thing to me is the price is right. You're paying zero for this out of hand, and I love that. Yeah, and to me, and it's the same reason I loved uh, Heroism a little bit, which is the blue, basically Guardian card for uh, blue hero, um, is that it can break up modifiers especially when they only have, like, one weapon out. You know, they might say Maul, right? He's showing the three and then the plus four on the Maul Saber. You can just deal that three to yourself indirectly also, so. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, you just did Scorched Earth, so Dangerous Mission. Or, sorry, Dangerous Maneuver. Dangerous Maneuver. Um, let's skip that one. Let's go to let's go to uh, Taking Ground. I like Taking Ground. It's a gray um, uh, plot. It's really the, the one plot that I, I like, that I m could see maybe finding its way into a constructed deck, although I, I really feel like plots are going to shine brightest in draft um, or some sort of limited format. Uh, maybe it is just trilogy at this point that it would be plot shining, but I think draft primarily. Um, but Taking Ground is a, a plot that uh, is two points, and it adds two to the value of your role for the battlefield during setup. And to me, it's almost impossible to get me to take my own battlefield when I know that I can take two shields from you. You have two less health and I have two more. Yep. Um, and I know there's plenty of shield hate floating around, but I want those shields. I don't want my opponent to have those shields. And to me, this is two points, more than likely two shields. Yeah. Um, Generally, shield hate isn't going to be ramped up to later. I mean, the most really, like, first turn shield hate is probably... Um, Intimidate. And then yeah. even if you split your shield, which you should probably always do against Blue Villain, because they probably have Intimidate in your deck, you're still starting with one more health than them, and you denied them two health. So, yeah, it's definitely could be good, so make sure you get those two shields. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way. I generally take my opponent's battlefield. There's really no battlefields that scare me that much. I mean, Emperor's Throne Room kind of did during the Emo Kids and Poe Ma's reign. Mm -hmm. uh, that really doesn't see too much play anymore, and I really don't have a problem with the fight. half the time their battlefields can help me too. So, yeah, I mean there are there are battlefields and decks that you're probably not going to want to select, but I, I I feel like almost seventy five eighty five percent of the time I'm I'm taking shields. Yeah, yeah, 
All right, so we'll do, I got one more, and then if you have another one, we could do that, but if not, we can roll on. Um, so this one, it's a uh, yellow hero, cost one, and it is the scruffy looking nerf herder. So part of it, I just love the name uh, of the card, but I still do think it can be pretty Who's good. scruffy looking? <laughs> uh, I just read one of the Star Wars comics the other day, and they literally put uh, nerfs, I guess, onto the Falcon and transport <laughs> Wow, hilarious. that's epic. And it was all Luke's idea, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the card uh, does, it says, choose one of the following card types, event, support, or upgrade, then look in opponent's hand and discard a card of the chosen type from it. So another similar card to this is probably friends in low places, but that is just events, but it does cost zero and you have to spot a yellow. So this, you don't have to spot anything and you can remove support and upgrades also. So I think for one cost, this is pretty good. Especially when the meta starts to settle down, this could be something that you could just tech in because you know a certain deck might use this one card that they're always mulliging hard for. Now you play this, your first action, if you end up going first, and you can get rid of that card. Uh, so I, I think it definitely has value. Maybe not so much in the beginning, but as the meta takes shape, I think it'll go up in value a little bit. Yeah, I think this is a meta card. I also think it's it's a card that um, uh, anything that costs a resource is, is, um, has to have it ha really has to accelerate my win condition for me to to want to play it um yeah. but if there if there's a card that is really just uh, it's devastating in this matchup for me like i it's 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 you know a relevant meta deck and if they get this card it, it's it's really going to kill me then i could see myself including this in a in a deck if there's you know if it's a hard counter to something that i'm playing yep yep uh all right any any other uh Non dice cards you want to talk about? If not, we can move on. No, I think I'm I'm good on the non dice cards. I'm I'm actually a little surprised. I think the removal in this set is uh leaves a little to be desired. Yeah, I mean I have it I think marked down a little bit later if we end up getting to, to draft, but I guess to say now in case we don't, but I think two of the the best removals uh are probably from I think the rivals. Uh we talked about hit a motive where it's re roll an opponent's die, choose uh, you know, before you re roll it, choose a symbol, and then if it lands on that symbol, remove it. Uh, yeah. So I think that's super good, and then I also think fight back's good. So it's not as good as he doesn't like you, but he doesn't like you is like the gold standard of removal. Um, yeah, fight agreed. Back doesn't hit specials, but I still think it, you can get pretty good value out of that. Um, but yeah, removal definitely pretty light. And yeah, I, I think hidden motive is better than every removal card in in legacies. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, it might just off the top of my head, it really might be. Yeah, very well could be. And and I wonder if they're doing that on purpose. Is that maybe every two years they'll do a removal heavy set? You know, so once Awakenings rotates out, maybe the one from a year, a year, yeah. from, a year from now will have more removal. Just yeah, like every other base set. Yeah. Kind of design. Yeah, because I, I wonder if two base sets full of good removal, it, you know, I just wonder. Well, they, they did reprint some removal in the uh, two-player starter set. Like, uh, I think Doubt is in there. Is Flank in there? Flank is in there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are both solid removal cards. So I guess they, they have reprinted some. That yeah. will be, you know, legal for uh, trilogy and even the the uh, standard cycle once the awakenings block rotates. I think those are a little bit, you know, like I mean, it's just tough. Like he doesn't like you. I think is just like I said, the gold standard cost zero. You remove one of your die, and you get to pick which die you remove from your opponent. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. It is. It's a fantastic removal card. And I think that's something that they probably won't reprint. Whereas doubt, it's still a risk play. You know, that person could reroll right into that yeah. damage or whatever you were trying to mitigate. Um, yeah. So it's got a chance with that, whereas he doesn't like you. Just good, hard removal. Uh, but yeah. So we'll move on to um, just talk about top decks in general, kind of what we think we might expect. Uh, so I have Hero Mill, I think is going to be a good one. Uh, I think that will see a bit more play because of the one... Uh, Blue Hero, uh, Force Meditation, this, it's got two specials, and they're uh, discard the top two cards of the deck. And then also they got Strength through Weakness, which is pay three to mill four. So I think Hero Mill decks, the three wide, whether it's Riken or you end up going with Yoda or however, it might end up playing out. I think it got better with this set. So I think it'll be around. I don't know if it'll be great, but I think you probably will end up seeing it played on TTS or even at regionals. I agree. I, I totally agree. I think the Hero Mill got a lot more help than Villain Mill, even though I do um, like Nuke Gunray. Um, I, I do think that the, the Mill deck, if it doesn't, I think the ideal spot for the Mill deck is to be a gatekeeper. You don't want it to dominate the meta, but you want it to keep other decks in check. Hey, if you can't burst down these characters in this time frame, you lose to this deck. I think that that's the 
the right place for the mill deck to be. And I, I, I think it's going to be right in that area. I think it's going to be a, a, a viable deck to play for sure. Yeah. I think they're hitting that sweet spot with mill. You know, I mean, we talked about this too. We listened to the Jedi trials and uh, they were talking about how hero mill is like, you feel like you can do stuff, but like villain mill was just like oppressive to the throne on car. And it was just like, yeah, anything you do just got countered. You couldn't play upgrades. You couldn't spend your resources. Where's this, you know, you can kind of counteract it while you're being milled uh, a little bit. So, but yeah, I still think it'd be really good. Um, next, I think Obi-Wan Moss. I think it has potential to be good. I played it only a handful of times. So my experience with it is very limited and my deck is definitely not, you know, the steaming engine that it could be. It definitely has some changes to it, but I think Obi-Wan just has a lot of staying power. And, it, you know, it feels bad. Like Moz focusing to Poe was a lot better than Moz focusing to Obi-Wan, but he just sticks around a lot longer than Poe does. Yep, he he is a beast, and he's beautiful with that beard. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, and Blue, in general, is just the, the best survival right now with Force Illusion, Ancient Lightsabers, uh, so that's super good, um, which I think only helps them. So and my next one is uh, R2-P2, and then when we were talking, you kind of just said special chain in general. Yeah, I think that we're going to see a lot of variations on, on the special chaining decks, and I, th I think they're going to be really strong, obviously, because I'm so high on Ala Secure. Um, I, I think it's definitely going to be relevant. You're going to see many, many iterations of it with many, many different um, lists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the number one deck, honestly. I think that'll be the number one thing you see uh, the most initially, and then we'll see how it plays out from there. Yeah, I mean, people will probably keep Poe and then swap out the blue character, whether it's Ayla or Yoda, if they might try fitting in there. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think Ayla might be a little bit better. Yoda is 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 good, but it's tough early game, because if you don't ramp early and get your good cards out, which Yoda does a good job at, um, yeah. but you're not going to be doing damage, right? If you special chain all, all four of your character dice, you do end up with four shields and two resources, maybe, or a resource or whatever. Um you know that's really not doing too much to further your board but yeah i'm not i'm not even sure that you want to keep um i'm not sure that you want poe and an ayla or poe and a yoda then I, I feel like you're almost losing some some offensive potential maybe not with ayla so much um as yoda but i, I think that because then you're really dependent on upgrades if you're going yoda because yeah. you just don't have the damage sides on your natural dice i think that um i think you might see ray po, r2p2 um and and actually, a card that I think fits kind of nicely in there is the um, the new R two D two from the from the hero starter. I think he's he's got no blanks. He's got two special sh sides. He lets you chain specials and draw a card. I think that you know if Poe is the target early for them, and you play an R two D two before he dies, you you've still been able to sustain that special chaining for the late game. Yeah. Um, and I I think that I still think that that character pairing itself is going to be solid. I think that they got help. Yeah, and he's only one cost, R2-D2. Yeah, I think he's a fabulous value again. I, I don't want to, you know, be a broken record, but yeah. a lot of value there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, people have been crying already almost about Yoda being broken and Special Chain being broken, but I really don't think it's there quite yet. There's probably potential for people to break it. There's probably potential for people to break indirect damage and just go hard in that. But as of right now, I really don't think Yoda's as much of a problem. I, I agree with you. I think Ayla might be a little bit more of a concern going forward. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be trying to break Ayla secure. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and another uh, notable deck that probably, will, I assume we probably will see, will be 5 Die Villain. You mentioned whatever format yeah. it might be, if it's still the same format or... So many options now. Or, yeah. They just have different... Thousand, options. Greedo. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so they just have options. It'll be good. It'll be interesting to see where it falls. Yeah, because you could do like Talzin Greedo and Stormtrooper, still keep all in there, or do whatever you want to do. Um, and I think I, I do feel like Maul might be somewhere just in the heavy hitting blue villain deck. Uh, maybe with Seven Sister or something like that, because then you start with five dice. Uh, I just think that some type of blue villain heavy hitting deck. Uh, Kylo 2, of course, would be somewhere in that mix also. Yeah, I, I actually have been messing around with a Kylo 2 Lobot deck, which everybody makes fun of Lobot, but it's been it's been fine. I played, I think, five games just the other night, and it, it pretty much mopped the floor with everybody. I think Lobot died one game, and that was it. Um, but yeah, Maul, I agree. Maul and Seven Sisters a clear, uh, obvious partner for him, but I, I think his ability is fantastic, and I think he's a fan favorite, so he's he's going to be there. you got to expect to see Maul at 
at events um, just because people like him and people want to play who they like. Yeah, definitely. Um, and next question was going to be like, what characters do we plan to make a deck with first? But we already both kind of touched on that. Mine's going to be Finn, Luke. Uh, I already know I'm going to try to see if I could do something with that. And yours will probably be Ayla three wide in some, some type of way. Yeah, I like I like the three character builds. I think the three character builds in case indirect ever becomes a thing, it, it's going to help uh, spread that out. But I, I definitely just think she is yeah. amazing. I probably am going to whip up a Palpatine deck for my dark side deck. I'm very high on the blue cards in this set. Um, yeah. I tend to be drawn to blue anyway, but uh, I do feel like blue is um, a cut above the rest. Definitely, yeah. The blue legendaries and characters just in general have been fantastic. Um... All right, so now we're going to do uh, our top six cards that we would, legendaries that we would want to pull in a box and our least favorite that we would want to pull in a box. Um, so these will be more like, I guess, click, I don't know, clickbait if that's the right word, but we'll just kind of shout out, talk about it a little bit, but not go too in-depth of, of what we're thinking. All right, so my top six is Yoda, Finn, Obi-Wan, Saber, Sp Speeder Tank, Zeb, and Moth are uh, my top six. I feel like the bottom three could kind of change in and out um, with maybe a few other legendaries that I would still want to see. But those top three are pretty much cemented of Yoda, Finn, and Obi-Wan Saber. But the bottom three I like, but if I don't get them, I'm not going to be heartbroken. I think that's pretty close to where, where I'm at. I um, I, I got Yoda, uh, Kylo Ren Starfighter. I got Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. I got Maul's lightsaber. I got Finn. And then in that sixth spot, I think I'm going to go Greedo, maybe Maul. I, I'm not, I'm torn. I could go either way. Um, Greedo just as, I just feel like he could fit in so many different spots. But Maul is, uh, looks really fun to build around as well. So I would be one of those two in the sixth spot. Yeah, as we talked about, this set seems pretty fair. I mean, there's so there's about like three or four. Uh, really three legendaries that I don't want, but the rest, I mean, I think there's 17 total. So, I'm, I mean, there's 13 legendaries that I'm still very, very much okay with getting. Um, yeah, I agree. There's a lot, there's a lot of depth. There's, there's four for me that I'm just, I just don't have much interest in. Yeah. Um, so bottom six uh, for me is Grand Moth, uh, Rebellion Leader, Force Wave, Callus Rifle, uh, Dr. Afra, and Greedo. Now, I, I, I like the last two. I like Afra and I like Greedo. I just don't play very many five-wide villains, and I probably am not going to play a villain droid deck, so I probably won't get much mileage out of both of them. <clears throat> but I might even, you know, I could even drop Greedo and probably put uh, Zeb's rifle on there because at this point, I mean, you and I were talking earlier, three cost, it really has to have redeploy. You know, if not, yeah. there's so many other options out there that have redeploy that, it just doesn't seem worth it. They're good cards, looking at their damage sides and stuff, but just don't seem worth it, really. Yeah, I mean, they've got good damage sides, but if you don't have the ability that's on Maul's lightsaber where you can get that die into the pool an extra time, I just, then I feel like you gotta have redeploy. You're not the baton, you're not the heirloom lightsaber. Those are just just better options, in my opinion, than than, uh, than those two. Yeah, so so my six would be the Grand Moff, the Rebellion Leader, um, the Zeb Rifle, and the Callus Rifle, which are the four that I'm just not, I, I just don't really see a good spot for them. Um, sure, maybe for fun or if I'm trying to build something a little wonky, but I don't think that they're going to make it into any meta decks. Um, and then five and six, is, is, they're kind of whatever. Um, I got Saul and... Dr. Afra, I mean, I know my brother wants her, and we pull cards, so he, he might hate me for saying that, but I, I'm not going to play her. Not just because he's playing her, but I'm just yeah. not as interested in that deck type. But I, I think that she will work. I think she'll have some crazy deck. I'm sure he'll make something ridiculous and beat me with it, you know, three consecutive games, and I'll cry. So Yeah, I mean, uh, Afra and Seven Sister might be decent together. I mean, being yeah. able to play the Secret Droids for one, I think BT costs two, so playing him for one might not be bad. Yeah, um, I like BT. Yeah, he, he's super good. At, he, I mean, he does it. He's got a built-in hate, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then when you deal that like, indirect damage yourself, you can draw with Afra, so there's synergy there. So there's definitely a deck that can be made. Not saying it would be good or anything, but I, there, there's something to be made there. But yeah, get, I'm on the same boat as you. I mean, I think she'd be fine, but I know I'm never going to play that deck, so I'd really would rather not see it. But I know my first box is going to be all the cards that I don't want. So. Oh yeah, me and you both. <laughs> um. But yeah, so in our last little segment, uh, Tommy and I actually both just drafted the other week. So we'll go into that a little bit. We're starting to approach an hour, an hour or so, and I want to keep it around there. Uh, 
but we'll just kind of quickly go over, I guess, just that night, what we played and what our strategy was, how we felt it worked out. And then eventually we'll probably draft with Legacies again. So we'll come back on a podcast and just probably strictly talk uh, draft. But so my first, uh, or well, my first, I'm not going to talk about the first, but the one that we did together, I ended up running Ketsu, Anakin, and Hera. And I ended up uh, mm-hmm. beating a certain guy in the fourth round to go 4-0 and, 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 and win that tournament. Yes, you kept your streak alive every yeah. time we play. Yeah. In, in a, you mercilessly in a, strike me down. Yeah. Uh, so I I think, and I've talked about this, I have um, a Rivals video up and talk about that. I still stand by the idea that Ketsu can be your best character. Um, I ended up drafting my first three packs. I pulled the Ion Disruptor Rifle, the five cost, the one, two, three, four, five blank. Uh, just does a lot of damage. You can always easily discard to go up in damage. And, um, you know, pl- whether I played that on Anakin or Hera, it didn't really matter because it now had redeploy. And a weapon like that with redeploy is bonkers. And I know it's five cost, and you probably, a lot of people are saying you might not be able to get that out, but I got it out every game, and it won me every game. So. I just went for the strategy as soon as I saw that. I was like, I'm playing Ketsu, and I'm going to run this crazy upgrade, and I'm going to get it out, and it's going to have redeploy, and it's just going to close out games. Yeah, I mean, uh, it worked. It was good. That That is a fantastic um, upgrade. I, as soon as you yeah. played it, I, I knew that um, I needed to play around it, and I was very grateful that the, the following turn, I think it was, or maybe even the turn you played it, I was able to... Yeah, uh, hidden motive, which is it's tailor made to remove that die. Yeah. Um, I also did the same thing to a sonic cannon with hidden hidden motive, which uh, was wonderful. Yeah. Um, I I uh, I drafted um, uh, Quinlan Voss very early in the in the night, and my uh, my draft philosophy was to target one character because I think you need to draft one character. But uh, I would I, after that I wanted to focus on getting um, upgrades and supports. As, as my diced cards, um, so that I wasn't passing up damage. Um, but uh, a Bosk fell in my lap, and there really wasn't anything else in the pack, so I wound up taking a Bosk. So I, I, I ran Voss, Bosk, and Jawa. Maybe I should have run Ketsu instead of Bosk, I'm not sure, but Bosk seemed appealing with that, um, the three damage sides and, you know, yeah. the three for one. Um, also, it was, there. yes, uh, two more health for sure. He definitely had the durability. He took a little heat. Um, off of Voss, because I felt like Bosk, as much of a tongue twister as this is becoming, was the clear target. Maybe I should switch to Quinlan for the name. <laughs> um, yeah, so Quinlan, uh, it, Bosk took some heat off of Quinlan, which was nice. So I was able to play upgrades on Quinlan after they committed to Bosk. Yeah, so I I don't know if it was the same Bosk that I pulled, but my second round of three packs, I pulled Hera, Bosk, and something else. Uh, and I ended up going with Hera because I knew I wanted Ketsu. And then with Hera, I could run Rainbow with Anakin and Hera. And Hera's special really wasn't that good. It ended up working out almost every time I rolled the special. I ended up having Fang Fighter. Um, so I still was able to play it, even though I almost forgot about Ambush just about every single time I played that card. Um, but yeah, Bosk seemed good, but for 11 points, the exact same suit as Ket- uh, Ketsu. I just preferred having that having Ketsu because I knew I already had the Iron Disruptor Rifle. But. Yeah, that that Bosk, you were actually about five draft positions away from me. That Bosk actually found its way to me, and there was not much else in that pack. So I I took the Bosk, and I had the option of running him at elite, um, which I didn't. <laughs> I also want to say so that uh, the viewers don't think I'm absolutely insane. The uh, I, I looked over the Empire at War set before we drafted, and I, I targeted a few characters. I felt like if you saw Ahsoka, she was insanely powerful. I felt like the Inquisitor was powerful in draft. And um, Quinlan was an interesting one because there's a card called Bounding Postings, which is draw one card for each character your opponent has that I thought no one in their right mind would draft, but almost everyone would be playing a three-character deck. Yeah. So I thought his special actually would have um, some oomph if I was able to draft a few of those. And I did. I, I was able to draft three, and I was able to punish people with that uh, throughout the tournament until I got the jack. Yeah. <laughs> What are you gonna do? <laughs> That's the way cookie crumbles. But yeah, I did when I played you, I didn't know who to go for, Quinlan or Bosk. Uh, and I think you played a first upgrade on Bosk, so it was like, all right, that cements my decision mm-hmm. uh, for him. Um, but yeah, overall, do you like draft? We did I love draft. I love it. it. It freshens it up. I've actually, um, I've I've tried to rein back my box purchases and planning on uh, trying to do more drafting. So I've allocated funds in that direction. Um, so, you know, with the baby coming, I got to be a little more careful. <laughs> I was able to acquire a Spock Lost Boba Fett 
from the galactic qualifiers and i was able to turn that into some some cash some cash so i'll be able to uh fund my legacies almost exclusively off of that which nice. is nice and you got a yoda one too you're keeping that right yeah i'm keeping the yoda he's just cool you know no blanks at least keep one spot glass room yeah i would have liked to have had more but i um i i wet the bed pretty hard at the galactic qualifiers <laughs> um but yeah so i i mean i've loved draft and i even i mean we've talked about hidden agenda and i mentioned fight back and if you're running a vehicle deck fang fighter is not a bad option so rivals is almost worth it even if you're not going to draft uh that much it's almost still worth it to pick up and then even characters like ketsu and anakin might find their way into one or two decks but you keep you keep downplaying lobot man i'm coming at you with yeah, ala secure and lobot play. man i'm playing some lobot it's anybody coming to play lobot's just gonna lose so just stay away from that <laughs> well as long as it's not a tournament maybe i'll have a shot <laughs> yeah yeah you'll kill me when we play uh at your house but uh <laughs> home turf tournament uh but all right, so that, that'll just wrap about everything up. We talked about legacies. We talked about each other, introduced ourselves. Uh, you know, I don't know what Tommy's plans in life are, but uh, I'll put him on the spot and say I hope that he comes back and keeps joining us because he's definitely somebody who has a lot of information in his head and is a, a very good Destiny player that I can testify for. Thank you very much. You're, you 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 make me a be better Destiny player, and you're a fantastic Destiny player yourself. And I'd love to come back. I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for having me. I don't have anything to plug, so I'm not, like, I'm nobody, but I'm just happy to be here, happy to talk about some Destiny. So now that your name's out there, right, after this, uh, <laughs> other podcasters will probably pick you up, and they'll just keep me here, I'm just looking at the cord, so you will go to other podcasts and plug us, I know you... Uh, you know well, not, not with a voice like this. <laughs> well, I know you have a good relationship with Tiny Grimes, so when you get on there, you can make us big and famous. Yeah, I know Tiny from, uh from my lcg days and i also played tiny in the last round of swiss at gen con yeah um which was which was wonderful he he just obliterated me in that round to the point where i think he even talks about it on one of his uh episodes of the smugglers then about yeah. just he felt bad for me because it just nothing was going my way and he knew you were a good player and i remember that he gave you a yeah shot. and he said he was very happy i made the the top cut he approached me afterwards and said he was he was thrilled that i made top cut so yeah. we both made top eight which was which was somewhat uh redeeming after that that whooping he put on me yeah yeah so uh again tom thanks for coming out uh, we're gonna wrap up now uh so i think playing destiny is better when you have people to talk to about so uh in the description i am gonna have a bunch of links these are two other podcasters that i've uh talk to or just some big ones in general so on there i've got knights of ren i've got i rebel i've got uh double blanks i've got sir christopher i got rebel gray the hyperloops artificery discard to reroll and the jedi trials so if you guys are still looking for more podcasts um you know definitely give us a like and subscribe we've got a facebook page that'll be in the description too uh but also give these guys a check out i listen and i think tommy's the same way i spend almost all day listening to podcasts at night i set up my chromecast and i start to stream uh, all the trash that Jay and Chris put up from Double Blanks and just, I can't, I can't stop watching it, man. I just can't. <laughs> uh, that was great. Uh, They'll appreciate that inside joke if they hear this. Yeah, I'm sure they will. But other than that, uh, again, Tommy, thanks for having you on. Uh, anybody watching? My pleasure. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll uh, catch you next time.